Okay, we're at the Soviet Movement in Reserve and Dam Designation Phase. You see how it's spelled. It's okay, boys and girls. Mr. Itinerant's not saying anything bad. Or Todd Reed, whatever. Hey, okay. So let's talk about a couple things real quick. Um, and some of this is going to be real basic board, uh, war game, board game stuff, and that's the way it is. Because a lot of people who watch my YouTube channel uh, don't play board games, they play more miniature games. So a couple concepts I want to get done first um, is zone of control. And this actually, this little guy here is perfect. So in many strategic level games, you have what you call zone of control. And it's the six hexes that surround your unit. And it's kind of the, you know, model that, you know, they aren't just in that one hex, especially these tiny hexes. But they have, you know, they're spread out throughout it. Because remember, this is thousand. I don't remember what this it's regiment or battalion size. So there's 500,000 people represented there. So there's a zone of control in this game. In this particular game, it's what they call. It's um, not sticky. When they mean sticky, that usually means you have to stop when you move in there. But it's um, cost you more to move in there. So normally this would cost you one to move into this spot. Well, here it's going to cost you an additional two. So anytime you move into someone's zone of control, it costs you an additional two. So it would cost you three. And you can move it. You can, So you could go th one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, if you wanted to. If, uh, like in this case, they overlap, they don't overlap. So it doesn't cost you plus four to get in there. Um, so that's zone of control. That's a concept in most war games. And in this game, uh, that's how it works. I don't know if it works the same in all SCS games. But in this one, that, that's the way that works. Now, here's another concept, stacking. Okay, so stacking in, uh, you know, almost all war games, board war games, there's a limit to how many things you can fit in a hex. Like, Advanced Squad Leader has it, and OCS Case Blue probably has it. And some games don't let you stack anything. I mean, don't stack, but just one. Well, most games, so some games go to that extreme. Um, in this one, you can stack up to six... And I don't have the term six points. So you can see here, see that two right there and that one? So that's how many stacking points there are. So you're allowed six. So you could have six ones or three twos or whatever combination. And um, and that's stacking. So that's these are all things you need to think about. Zone of control and stacking while you're moving. Now when you're moving in this game, you can move one piece at a time. Or you can move a whole stack. And you can just, whatever pieces... Um, or you can move it as a stack. And when you do it as a stack, you just have to remember that some not everyone has the same amount of movement points. So that guy's got a nine, or that guy's got a twelve. So he'd have to drop off and the other. So overrun combat you can do during movement or during the exploitation phase. Um, so basically, this guy could you'd pay your three to move it into here. Well, this guy didn't have much movement, but whatever. Let's, let's pretend he had enough. So you do one, two, three, and then it costs you two movement points to move into. Well, you wouldn't move into it, but you stay there and you say, I'm going to overrun this hex. And then when you do that, you battle normally. And I'm suddenly forgetting something about overrun. But basically, if you win, you know, they, they'll retreat and you have to move into that spot. And then that guy, so assuming this guy just retreats to here, let's say he won that. And then in the combat phase, he could still combat there. So the Soviets really get, um, could get two times to fight, and the Germans three, and I'll show you why that is in just a minute. So reserve. So the Soviets have six six reserve tokens, I guess, six reserve chits. And that means they can place, during this phase, they can place someone on reserve. So I could place him in reserve, meaning, pardon me, I'm getting dizzy here, during the Soviet exploitation phase, which comes much later, so Soviet exploit movement and overrun segment. The guy in reserve could then participate in that movement. The Soviets have to use reserve to participate in exploitation because they have no units that naturally exploit. So you have to place them. So you want to put those in reserve that you think you might want to use later because the Axis are going to move um, after the Soviets do, and so you want to take advantage of that. The Soviets do not get to have an exploitation phase during the Axis turn. But the Axis, you'll see after the Soviet move, see right there at the top, the Axis get a reaction phase in this turn, in the Soviet turn. So they get to move there and can overrun. That's one battle. 
And then down here, they get to um, move and could overrun. That's two. And then they can combat. That's three. Another note on reserve markers. They cannot be put on someone that has um, moved this turn. So. Okay, the determ the dam phase I keep wanting to talk about. Um, it's the determined action marker. So you can see they've got these. The and this the number of reserve markers and the number of dam markers you get is called for at the beginning of the scenario. So every turn they get four of those, and every turn they get six of those. Anyway, so what the determined action marker does is, at some point, if I know that I want to do something. Now, I'll tell you what the, these are used for. Anyway, I determine where I want to put it. They don't move with stacks, so you put them wherever you think you're, think you're going to end up moving people. Or, like if I know these guys are going to stay here, and I'm expecting an attack, I can put that here. Or I can put it here, and then move into that spot. Now, I have to remember, the axes get to move. So if I put it somewhere empty, the, so the Germans can move into it, and I would lose that for the turn. I'd get it back, but I'd lose it for the turn. So let's look at what the determined uh, action marker does. If I have a determined action marker on a Soviet when they attack, on a Soviet stack, whoever's attacking can double their attack value. The Germans, when they have it, let's say they put it on this stack, not only is this stack um, affected by it, but if these stacks are also participating in the same attack, which they, these guys couldn't, but so if these two stacks were participating in it, they would all get their um, attack doubled. Uh, the the determined action markers can also be used in overrun. So in that case, like if I knew I was going to overrun that guy, I would put that marker there. Well, I guess I would just move into it and then put the marker on top of them. And on the defense, um, the stack that is being attacked, if they have a determined action marker on it, is their defense is doubled. That's for both Axis and Soviets. All right, so now I'm going to do my Soviet moves. I'm going to go through all this whole phase, the movement, reserve, and um, dam phase. <laughs> and then I'll report back. So I'm not sure if it's going to be on the end of this video or if it's going to be a separate video. It depends how long I go on. Um, and like I said, this is how I'm going to go through this. I'm going to go through every phase like this, and then at some point I'll just stop doing that and just give you after-action reports about it. Another thing that I guess would be important during the movement phase that you have to think about, and I may have touched on this in the other video, but I'm too lazy to watch it, so um, it's supply. <coughs> so I don't want to get my units. First of all, units, these, so these units here, all the regular armored fighting units, not armored, but all fighting units, are supplied by headquarter units that are these. Usually they have the flag on them. Um, and that 8 is how far it can supply. Soviets probably won't have to worry about this so much because they're not going to be moving fast. Because remember, my goal is to get two supplied German units off one of these red dots, red hexes. Um, so that's going to be really hard for the Germans. Um, so... And it so eight hexes actually the the unit can be nine hexes away because it only has to get adjacent to it and you count normal movement points at the so yeah you use normal movement points and you just have to trace to it so I guess I could use this road or if there were no roads around you just go one two three four five six seven eight and eight just needs to get to here just next to it so that's um that's an interesting thing and even with terrain it doesn't matter so if they got to eight here across the river not a problem. I don't think it matters what kind of river. But otherwise, you count it. So if you're going across this river, that's 5. So it's plus 5, so it's actually 6 to get. Is that plus 5? Yeah, so 6 to get across that. So that so most of these units, um, and you don't supply a reserve marker, by the way. That was just an example. So most of them are 8. So all the regular combat units are supplied by them, whereas the HQs are supplied by the edge of the map. So the Soviets are supplied by the north and east side so they just need to be able to trace a, an unlimited line of supply from the east and the north. The Germans from this river to the map edge or from the river over but the interesting thing is is I was going to go around this way <laughs> so um, so let's talk about zone of control again 
supply does not go through zone of control. So it couldn't go through there, can't go through there. It could go not through there, but it could snake up and through there and then over. And it's just, I don't think they count any, any of the terrain or anything, unless it's impassable. So right now the Soviets have got themselves a nice defense for supply. So actually, you know, this would probably be a good use for the Romanians to kind of go up here and make sure they keep open some gaps because you can go through a friendly unit for supply.